Good evening everyone, I'm Nathan, here with my wonderful wife Laura. Hello! And we're here to take a look and review of the Ready Steady Cook board game. Yes, so if you haven't heard of Ready Steady Cook, it is a cooking competition TV show. Um, we, we did have a version of it here in Australia, but this board game is actually based on the uh, UK or British one, we believe. Was that where it originally started? I don't know. I think so, but I'm not sure. Look what shape the box is in. Yeah, really, really unusual shape. <laughs> Um, so this is a food trivia and fun game for all of the family, so... Now, I will we'll mention here, it says players four to unlimited, which is just a lie for the unlimited part. <sighs> yeah. But, the four player part, this can theoretically be played with two players. There is just a couple of charade cards in there, which um, you obviously need to be in teams for. But if you skip them, it can be perfectly played with two players. Yeah, so most of the trivia in that is, is fine just between two. Um, otherwise, you do play in teams, hence why you would need four or more people. Uh, it's essentially a, a race to the end of your cooking time. Because yep. um, in the TV show, if you haven't seen, uh, with a couple of contestants and like chefs come on, they have various ingredients and they cook in front of a live audience. And then the audience vote, either a capsicum or a tomato. Whichever team you want to have win. Um, I think the Australian version is slightly different from this one. But it's not the uh, same. Like the show, but... Similar framework. I haven't watched a lot of the UK one to know all the ins and outs. His instructions, as per usual, the scans will be up below yes, for it. there'll be a link to the instructions, just in case you find this, perhaps, without them. Alright, so we get two timers. One is red for the tomato team. And one is one. green for... Cool capsicum. Yeah, um, so these are just your typical little, like, what are they called? Hourglass timers? Yeah, um, these ones, since I think maybe the age, um, sometimes they get stuck, which is cool because you get unlimited time yeah. to answer questions. It's a little bit clumpy. Um, so there's one for each team. We then have. Are they car caricature, caricature, caricatures? Caricatures. Uh, we have five of the six different Burr. chefs from the show. We are missing one of them. Uh, the only one I really know is Ainsley here. The other ones I'm not familiar with because we had different um, chefs. I wish it would focus. It, it mustn't like them at all. Apparently not. Come on. Uh, so these are hard plastic moving pieces, and then mm. the actual pictures are stickers, and they are double sided. It's because our camera had auto focus turned off. Ah, there we go. I see. Yeah. So they're all different colours because, of course, that's how you keep track of who's who. Oh, we have a dice. Have just a standard. Or a die for all die, those yes, grammatical people one. out there. All right, shall we show the board next we before shall. we get into all the cards at the bottom? Okay, so it's a, it's a fairly complicated looking board. So depending on which team you are on, you either start in the tomato starting position, which you can see right down the bottom here, Boop. or the capsicum starting position on the other side. Um, you then roll the die as you would in any other board game and make your way from here and follow the path all the way through until you get to the 10 seconds to go countdown at the end. And there is slightly different rules from when you get there which we'll explain shortly. Yes, um, so let's start down here. Um, you just move through and whatever you land on you pick up essentially a matching card. Um, there's six, six different yep, yep. decks pot, of cards. Potluck, TV trivia, time trial, Ferns, fun facts, chef's challenge, and that's it. And then the last one is when we get to 10 seconds. So there are some blank spaces on the board. Nothing happens on nope, those. Nope, <laughs> nothing happens. Um, everything else, like we said, you just follow on whatever you land on, and then you get the corresponding card, which will show you. When you then get to your 10 second countdown, you get a special different card that has multiple questions on it, which you're then timed for. Each one you get right, you move one second down towards the stop cooking And end. theoretically, you could answer all ten in the timeline and just win straight away, but it's if unlikely. If you're fast enough, yeah. If, if you do get one wrong, you have to stop where you are, wait until your next turn, and then start at the same number again to try and win. So let's have a look at the cards, because that, that's really the main part of the game. I will also mention, if you land on one of the cards and you get the question right, you get to roll again, you keep on doing that until you get an answer incorrect and then it's the next team's turn. Yes. So if you get your first one incorrect, well, sorry. But it also <laughs> means that um, you can keep on moving forward even if you don't get many correct. 
It just means you yeah. don't get extra turns. You just don't go as far. No. Yeah. Um, if, obviously, if you're really good at the questions, you can go quite a long way all in one turn. And there's actually quite a lot of questions here across all different categories. There is. So let's start up here. We have a deck of TV trivia cards. So And the these... TV trivia will test your knowledge on TV food programs and popular advertisements. Um, this is a difficult section for us. Uh, we're not in the same country it's as British. obviously this game came so from. So a lot of the stuff is not available here. It's got different names. It's not any of those sort of things. Yeah, so things like this one are okay. Name a different type of food starting with each letter in your first name. Uh, so my name is Laura, so I would start with L and go... Lasagna, <laughs> or something like that. And then, you know, A, U, R, A, so on down there. So that one's not so bad. Um, oh, here's, here's a good one. Name the British know. athlete who outran a pot noodle, and it's obviously Roger Black. Someone can tell us what that's related to, what's because a, what's a I Roger have no Black? idea. Is it related to Jack Black? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, so we'll just flick through a few. I, don't, I mean, that's another one we don't really have here in Australia. Um, this one, you see, we do have Heinz here, and they do use that same sort of... Beans, means, Heinz. Heinz. So, yes, some are easier right. than others. We also have multiple choice. We had Father Ted here. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd, you'd probably have a better run at this, though, if you are indeed, you know, from the right. But it is still playable if yeah. you're in a different country. Yeah. They're not so um, outlandishly British. No. All right, we then have the Chef's challenge has a lovely picture of the chef it just it, it, it tests your knowledge of food just in general yep uh so bolty means bucket true or false true. true um not all of them are true or false some of them you actually have to answer the question and there's some multiple choice ones there as well we found that a couple of questions which is so outlandishly like obviously not true like we get a multiple choice question and it, two of them are like you know how do you make fried rice one of them's like or you get your fish first and you cut it up, and the next one you make bolognese, <laughs> and the third one's boiled rice. Most of them are reasonable, but yes, there are a few that are a bit uh, bit wacky in their options. Oh, my favourite one, <laughs> Fern's Fun Facts. Look at that font. Now, um, I should have looked this up before we filmed, but is Fern the host, perhaps, hmm. of the UK version? We obviously had a different host here for Ready Steady Cook Australia, but I'm guessing that is who she is because she's not one of the chefs. So, the Ferns Fun Facts only appear once you enter the studio on the game board, which is about a quarter of the way through, I think. Yeah, hang on. Let's quickly open that back up. It's quite a large board, sorry. So, right down the bottom, the studio, then they start appearing. Yeah, so there's one here. So, you don't get any for just that first really small stretch. Um, and they're very similar to the uh, Chef's challenge it's just an opportunity to test your food knowledge mm -hmm. we found these were probably slightly more difficult than the chef's challenge i think it depends on your food knowledge for sure i mean that one's not really food knowledge is it that's more well tasty body. food <laughs> so again there's some like branded ones in there some multiple choice wait go back again what was that one that's with shiitake that mushrooms types of pig trotters huh okay of course so, yeah, quite a few different bits and pieces in there. We have the time trial. Which use the timers, which we were so kindly provided with. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, these are not just trivia. These ones actually require Charades. you to do something. So you have to pick one person in your team to mime the following action for the rest of the team to guess. So that's where the team play yeah, kind so of the, comes Yes, this in. particular category can be difficult with only two players, but you can always just skip it or if you trust the other person and you go, you did a pretty good job, you can give them a pass. That's what I was going to say. So um, for Nathan and I, it was just the two of us when we played this. So say I was peeling the carrot and he had to guess if I'm doing this and I'm peeling a carrot and he knows, I trust that he will then say, yeah. yes, I can tell what you're doing. Whereas well, maybe a little bit more tricky. You might go, oh, no, nah, I don't know uh, what you're well, doing. You're skinning a beaver? I don't know. So that, that's when you really need your own team um, to factor in if you don't trust the people you're playing with. Um, but again, that's not really an issue for us. Well, dusty um, card, that one. Oh, no, just, it's marked. just marked. Yeah. Um, so there's more like slicing a turkey. That one's named eight different cakes. So um, these are just examples. You don't have to name the ones on the and card. And yet again, another one, if you had teams, you could go, that's definitely a cake or that's not. But if you trust the person, it shouldn't be a problem. You could certainly have some arguments. I mean, you could say, um, yes, a bat cake. 
Oh, you, everyone knows a bat cake, and you know, you can or, try or, and convince or a people. Meat, a but, meat cake. Oh, gosh. Um, lots of miming ones in this one. This one actually um, write down requires six you new, to write down. Six new three letter or more words from English Breakfast, which will be easy for Laura because she loves doing those. I do like word games. Um, it does say, I think, in the instructions to have pen and paper with you for some of the answers as well. So there you go. That's something just to factor in. And guess what potluck is? These cards are split 50 50 between an advantage or a disadvantage to when you're playing the game. They like make you move forward, move back, mm -hmm. lose a turn. So in this case, your tart seduces the audience Ooh. to move forward one with pride. We found these pretty useless, to be honest. They don't do a great deal. Your chef's hat hides a bad hair day, move forward one. Uh, there'll be some bad ones in here. Um, you chop some chilies and then rub your eyes. Ouch. I've done Ooh, that, that before. Is, yeah, that's painful. Miss a go, receiving first aid. Miss a go for something. Miss a go. And that's essentially all they do. Move, miss turns. Yeah, potluck. <laughs> now, the countdown, that only happens when you get to the top and you get to the 10, 9, 8, you know, down to, to zero. So these cards are a bit different. They have 10 different questions on them. You start at the top, you don't use the dice in that section. No. You just move one at a time based on whether you get the answer correct so or incorrect. So if I get, you know, number 10 right, scurvy is a disease caused by the deficiency of which vitamin. It's obviously vitamin C. They didn't have oranges. You then move to nine and keep on going until you either get one wrong or the timer runs out. Yes. Uh, so if the timer does run out, it's the next person's turn. And you stay on that number that you're on. So if you got down to, say, number five, for example, on your next turn... This person picks up the next card. And starts on number five. Number five. When you get to number one, if you get that correct, ta-da! You're the wiener! Stop cooking and you're done. So, a lot of cards in this game. If you ever find this game and you're missing the cards, you're out of luck. <laughs> Unless it's the time trials or the potluck, then maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But, yeah, if, if there's a lot of cards missing, it would be hard to play. But there are a lot of cards in here, so I think you'd be hard-pressed to find it. You know, I, with, with that many cards I will out. say, the actual quality build of all the components is actually really nice. Yeah. They're plastic pieces, there's a lot of nice artwork, it's solid. Um, it's, a, it's a nice looking game. Um, yeah. A I'm, lot of like licensed games for like shows and things uh, are maybe just more of a way for them to sell something and make a bit of money. Someone's put some thought into this. Unfortunately, like all trivia games, it gets outdated and once you sort of start to learn the questions, if you play it a lot, it sort of you know, outlives its usefulness. But as a trivia game and a food game, it's pretty good. I would yeah. definitely play it over a lot of other ones I've seen in the past. Me too. If you enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section down below what your favourite trivia game is. Maybe it's a general one. A gen general blah 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 blah. I can't speak. A general one like um, Trivial Pursuit, for example, or maybe it's something themed like this one is obviously. Okay, so Laura's favourite is Ad Man. It's a VHS one about ads. <laughs> And I was going to say the game of knowledge. But oh, okay. yes. And um, we're quite fond of the logo board game by Moose Games. Indeed. Mm. Hit that subscribe button and check back soon. We have videos every single Tuesday. Sounds good. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.